we're going to talk about how to scan with the HP OfficeJet 6500 printer. These directions will work very well for other similarly numbered models in the HP OfficeJet line, such as the 8500. And the first step in any scan is to get your document onto the glass. Here's what we're going to scan, this lovely piece of paper here. And when you're putting your paper onto the document uh, uh, tray, you want to look for this indicator somewhere on your scanner. That's going to tell you the top corner of the document. So this should be the top. And then we close this down. Now from this point, there's two different ways we can initiate the scan process. We can do it from the printer itself, or we can do it from the computer. Let's start with the computer method. We launched the HP OfficeJet software, and now we're looking for scanner actions. In particular, we're looking for scan a document or photo. We're going to click on that. Now we've got several options here for bringing the scan into the computer. There is Save as PDF, which is a PDF document, is a, a document file that's very easy to open on multiple different types of devices, whether they be Windows or Mac or other. You've got JPEG, that's generally used for your photos from digital cameras, that kind of thing. And then you've got some functions here for directly email as PDF or email as JPEG. I would generally recommend you stay away from those because they do require that you have some kind of email software running on your computer, such as Microsoft Outlook, Mozilla Thunderbird. A lot of people use their email without those programs. They just use web-based email like Yahoo or Gmail or that kind of thing. So unless you have one of those programs on here and you know how to configure it, Go ahead and go with the method we're going to show you here, which is right now we're worried about just creating the file. There are several options that you can adjust here at this point. You can change the size of the paper. Most of the time you do not need to do that. You can change the output type from color to grayscale or black and white. Black and white is helpful if you're scanning with the intent to fax. It generally improves the clarity of your recipient's document. Resolution, 200 dpi is good for documents most of the time. If it's got a lot of very fine print, you might go with 300 dpi. And if you're scanning an image or something like that that needs to be print quality, such as a logo that you're you know, wanting to send to your printer, that kind of thing, uh, then you generally want to go with 600 dpi or higher. Keep in mind that the file size of those uh, higher resolution scans are going to be very large indeed. So whenever you can use, uh, especially for email, you want to stick to somewhere in that 200 dpi range. And in some instances, for simple documents, you might even get away with 100. And file type, of course, is PDF. We do want to see a preview of the scan. That means we want to see it on the screen before we commit it to a file. So now we click the Scan button. The scanner will knock around for a bit. It'll knock around for a bit longer if it's been sitting dormant for a while, but eventually it'll get around to the task of scanning your document in, and you will see it on screen. Now at this point, you can adjust your brightness or contrast. Generally, the uh, HP does a pretty good job of adjusting these things itself, but if you wanted to manually override something, you could do that here. You can adjust the rotation of the document if you like. If uh, you accidentally put it in upside down, you don't have to go switch it. You can just switch that here. If you do adjust the document over on the glass, just click Preview here to refresh this view. You can add additional pages, if you like, by using this Add Page button. And at that point, as additional pages were scanned in, these buttons down here for navigating between those pages would then be lit up. In this instance, we're just going to be scanning one page. The other thing that's a nice feature is if you're only wanting to scan part of the page for some reason, then you could adjust this rectangle by clicking and dragging on one of the indicators on the edge here. And you can adjust how much of the image is actually going to get scanned in. So for example, if we just wanted to capture this one color, color uh, block off of this page, we could change the scan size and save ourselves quite a bit of file size by only worrying about scanning this. But in most situations, you're probably just going to want to scan the whole page. So you can leave that as is. Now we click Save, and the computer wants to know where do you want to save this file. 
By default, the HP looks in your My Documents folder and offers to save things there. If that works for you, great. A lot of times, I like to save my scans to the desktop. It makes them that much easier to locate when it's time to attach them to the file. And we're going to name this one Scan2, thereby giving away that this is not Take1 on this video. And now the folder where we saved our file opens up. If you'd like, not a bad idea, by the way, to check periodically, you can go ahead and open that in your PDF reader of choice and make sure that your document is the quality that you want before you go sending it somewhere. So now we can close that. All I did to open that, by the way, was just double-click the file. If you have a PDF reader such as Adobe Reader or Foxit PDF Reader, then those will open up automatically upon clicking. Now we can close these other windows and open our email application, Yahoo or Gmail or that kind of thing. And we click the button to compose a new message. We type in an address. Blah, blah, blah. We can type in a subject. And then somewhere on your email is going to be a button or a link related to attaching a file. Very often, this is designated with a little paperclip symbol. This is true in Microsoft Outlook as well, um, and also in Mozilla Thunderbird. So we click to attach a file, and the computer is now asking us, well, which file would you like to attach? We're going to look for Scan2, which is the one that we just created, and click Open. That file gets attached, and then we can send our message. So that is how to attach a PDF file scan from the HP to your email message. Now, I told you there was a second way to initiate the scan, and that is over on the printer. There's a little menu here that's very difficult to see in our camera, but we will do our best. And take my word for it, this little button down here is scan. And then it's asking, do we want to go to a memory device? That would be like one of your memory cards in the little card reader down here. Or do we want to go to a computer? We want to go to a computer. It's asking us which computer, if there's more than one to choose from. We tell it which computer. And then the choices here, save as PDF, save as JPEG, email as PDF. It's the same kinds of choices that were over on the computer. But now we've got them in this little screen. We want to save as PDF. And then we click the scan, the start scan button here to confirm. Now the scan happens on the computer in much the same way that it did before, except here we initiated it on the device itself, and if everything is properly connected, then after it is finished scanning over on your computer, the folder will open automatically. I did nothing there, that happened automatically. And the file that you scanned in, which it named Scan0002, by default saved in your My Documents folder. And if we open that up, there's our scan once again. Attaching to the email is basically the same kind of process. You launch your email application, and some applications allow you to click and drag, holding down the must button on and dragging it onto your email message, and some uh, require you to use the attach button and find it like we showed you on the screen here. But either way, the process is the same from that point forward, whether or not you initiated the scan on the device or on the computer. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. And thank you very much.